Nine. All right, we're going to see how this works in the dark. Okay. <laughs> Up here, guys. Brandon. So from the article that you just got done reading, the article was talking about biogenous sediments. What you should have taken away from the article is that there are animals in the ocean, fish, that there are a bunch of animals in the ocean that produce sediments. Those are biogenous sediments. And there's these fish that supposedly produce crystallized carbonate in their guts, which is the answer to your warm-up for today. So the fish produce this crystallized carbonate. And as the temperature of the water rises, they produce more or less of this carbonate. They produce more. And it talks about that in the article. So you should have addressed that in the article. So they produce more sediment. Or not more sediment. They produce more carbonate which in turn turns into sediment. So uh, they actually do produce more sediment. So as they produce this calcium carbonate, they ex it goes into the water. So as the temperature of the water rises, the fish produce more carbonate. And then as the acidity increases in the ocean, what, ha what happens to that carbonate? You may read that. If we add well, let's think of what is in calcium carbonate, or what's in carbonate. Carbonate is CO3. CO3. So if we add acid, which is H, hydrogen, or any form of acid, reacts with CO3, what's going to be a byproduct? What is CO3 kind of like? Think of a gas that's similar to CO3. CO2. So as the acidity level rises, the CO2 or CO3 turns into CO2. And all of a sudden we have more carbon dioxide being produced. And where is that carbon dioxide going to go? Into the air. So we have water temperatures rising, fish producing more carbonate, acidity levels going up, carbonate turning into CO2, CO2 is in the atmosphere rising, global warming. So all this from just extra carbonate produced in the gut of a fish. Now let's take an analogy and let's think of an analogy that we might be able to understand that is similar but very different. Think gas prices rising. What happens as gas prices rise? The economy gets the wallet higher. Gets huh? The wallet gets emptier. Well, okay. Chad's wallet goes down. Okay, gas prices rise. What happens to prices of products that we buy? Rises. It rises. What happens to car prices? Yeah. Or what kind of cars do we have to buy then? Energy efficient cars, so forth. All right, so with gas prices rising, does it affect a lot of people? Does it affect people just who get gas? No. No. Because people who ship goods have to increase their prices, then the stores have to increase their prices, and the next thing you know, we're paying an arm and a leg for a pizza that should cost two bucks. Only cost 50 cents to make. And it costs a lot to ship, so we end up having to pay six dollars for it. All right, so why did I tell you that story? Because it was cool? No. Sediments in the ocean. So think of carbonate. Changes in sediments in the ocean are like changes in gas prices. It affects the entire ocean. Not just the immediate vicinity of the ocean, not just those animals, but it affects the entire ocean. So let's talk about these sediments. Where do they come from? All right. This time, all students are required to be in class. So our sediments are basically the same as sediments in the around us. Various materials will settle through the water, so they'll float down. So these could be dead animals, these could be sand, it could be anything. Filters through the water 
And where is it going to go? It's going to accumulate on the ocean floor. It's just like it is for us. You drop a handful of sand, where is it going to accumulate? On the ground. Works the same way. There's gravity in water too. All right. So what can we find out from these ocean floor layers? Well, if you go look at a side of a mountain, or if you go look at a, where a mountain kind of has come up and it shows all the layers, what can you tell from that side of a mountain? Or if you cut a tree in half and look at the rings of a tree, what can you tell from that? How what? You can tell how old it is. Okay. What else can we tell? What it's gone through throughout the years. All right. So let's think of a tree, because we can all visualize the rings of a tree. If I cut a tree in half, look at the rings, and I have a wide ring, like a really wide ring in that tree, what does that tell me about that season for that tree? It had a good season. Had a good season means there might have been a lot of rain, like awesome weather, it was a good season. Now if the next ring is really, really skinny, what does that tell me about that season? Bad season. Bad season. Didn't get that much rain or fertilizer or something. You can tell the same thing with sediments. We can tell how did the plates move? Because that's traced underwater. So we can tell where have they been moving to, where are, did they move from. Past changes in climate. How was the climate one million years ago today? We probably can't get that exact, but we can see what was the climate like at this point in this juncture in time. Circulation patterns. How did the water or ocean circulate at one point? Did it circulate the same as it does now? And then knowing that, you can tell where do the animals migrate to or from. And then cataclysmic events. What is a cataclysmic event? <clears throat> My birthday? Is that a cataclysmic event? <laughs> How about the extinction of a dinosaurs? Cataclysmic event? <laughs> Dubonic plague? Probably a cataclysmic event. Cataclysmic event would be an event that affects millions upon millions of people and affects the environment. So like this huge just event. So we can almost think of what happened as Japan as a cataclysmic event. Well, if you were a Japanese person, you probably wouldn't. All right. So, how do we look at the soil samples? Do we have Brandon out there? Or let's say Chad and, Chad and David out there with a rope and a, a scoop and they lower it down? Can we do that? Probably not. They have these large ships. You guys have, have you seen um, Armageddon? Yes. Okay, think of how they drill in the asteroid. They have these large ships and they have these pipes, this pipe that goes down. And it goes way, way down. This, their limit right now is the drill efficiently is about five miles deep. So they can go down about five miles and they can still effectively drill underwater. So they send a drill down, and they drill, and they take a sample. So they can stick something in the ground that goes pretty deep into the ground, and they, they can pull samples from various layers. So I can look at layer after layer after layer after layer and see what was present at that time. If I have a thick layer of calcium carbonate, what does that tell me? Or a thick layer of carbonate? That what? There was, well, a lot of dead something, but... Did we just say that as temperatures rise, the fish produce more carbonate crystals? So if I have a thick layer of carbonate crystals, what is that going to tell me about that time period? Probably warmer. All right, yeah, it's probably warmer. 
So they take these core samples and they're allowed to look and analyze this sediment. So what kind of sediment do they look at? They look at these four types. So we have lithogenous, biogenous, hydrogenous, and cosmogenous. They're all ogenuses. So let's look at the root words. That will tell us. Or the prefix. What does litho mean? What does the litho sound like? What word did we learn? Lithosphere. lithosphere. What is the lithosphere made of? Rock. So lithogenous is what we think of as sediment. It's the dirt. It's the rock. The rock that makes up the sediment in the ground. That would be your lithogenous. And then your biogenous. Your biogenous are going to be your hard remains of living organisms. What do they mean, hard remains of living organisms? Like skeletons? skeletons or fossilized stuff or shells. Big one is shells. Shells are made of calcium carbonate. So they don't disintegrate very easily, so a lot of times they end up as sediments. They break up, they mix with other rocks. That's why you can, what do you think limestone is? Or chalk? What are they made of? They're all made of carbonate, calcium carbonate. Yep. So chalk, at 